Today's topic is why fit pros need a refund policy, uh, and I have certainly experienced this myself. Um, no doubt you two boys have as well. So my 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 experience was when I was training someone for the uh, Strong First Kettlebell Cert. I think he bought a pack of 10 off me or something, used eight sessions, and then decided he no longer needed me, um, <laughs> and then wanted money for his final two sessions back. Uh, it wasn't a lot of money, but I sort of wasn't prepared to... Uh, you know, hand back just over 100 quid, and I was a bit like, oh, that's, that's annoying. <laughs> and I had, you know, I didn't have a refund policy, I didn't have a website, I didn't have anything back in the day. Um, James, what's uh, what's your experience uh, w- with this? Horrendous nightmares. <laughs> horrendous nightmares. <laughs> to put it succinctly, horrendous nightmares. I think that's the best way to do it. Now, when we're doing certifications around the world, we had people asking for refunds. I'm not joking. They would turn up to courses and events and they were asking for refunds after the time, after the event. After the fact, right? And, but they were doing it in a way where back then they will go to their credit card handlers and say mm. it was a fraudulent transaction. And I didn't have a signed waiver saying that they attended the event. I didn't have a picture of them at the event or with a certificate. You know, they had pictures and stuff there but it wasn't showing that they're on that specific date and that time. So I lost thousands and thousands of dollars. Do you remember that, Josh? Like, it was horrendous. I do, unfortunately, yeah, I remember that. It was sickening. Well, learning, and it wasn't just one or two people. We had about 20 people do this to us. And it was just, I don't know how, I don't know whether they'd spoken to each other, various different parts of the world or how it happened, but they'd been to an event. They spent three days with us, had a great time posting on social, you know, saying all wonderful things. And then three to four weeks later, they've gone, crap, I'm running out of money. I need the money back. This is a good way to get money back. So let's put it back on here. So that's, that is like worst case scenario. And we're talking not just five or $10 here. We're talking 20 to $30,000 worth of refunds we had to give back. And it was horrendous chargebacks. And then even worse, it was the chargebacks from the credit card companies. I had to pay for it. I'd pay 15%. On top of it. Obviously, this is all about refund policies. We must have had a refund policy in place at that time already. We did, but it wasn't bulletproof. And that is one of the things. So it's understanding what your bulletproof refund policy is. Is it clear? Is it understandable? Does it cover the laws of each state around the world? Does it cover the laws of your country? And is it applicable? And you have to have two levels. One is that, is it, is it, does it have a legal jargon? And the other one is, is it simple and easy to learn and understand? And you've got to make sure you cover cover both. So that's in terms of strength matters types of things here now. But I've had the similar thing. Obviously worldwide. Before we, co- we'll come back to you in, in a second. Andrew, what's your experience with uh, no doubt having to give refunds in the past? Yeah, I've got two specific ones that I can think of where one was that similar to you, Josh, although uh, someone had signed up, I think it was around for about 12 week program. Um, did the first week well actually did the first two sessions of the first week and um, then dropped off you know, making excuses and then were, were pushing then for, for, for me to make, make a refund to them um, at that time I didn't have a refund policy in place um, so I guess fortunately for me I, at this stage I was working with um, lawyers so I was able to connect with them and ask one particular lawyer. <laughs> yes, it was. They were able, still. It was. It was quite pricey investment, um, but they did it at obviously almost mates rates um, uh, to, to to get that ironclad uh, refund policy in place. And then the second one, I, I was able to back on the uh, or use that to refund policy as a guide. Uh, somebody was uh, had been signed up for a long term program. But I could tell that she wasn't she wasn't ready, um, and then uh, she'd been pushed into it by her supportive husband for the right reasons, of course. But she wasn't ready, and um, and she was looking for um, a, a way out. And I said, "Look, I'll give you the refund because I, I don't want to be forcing you into something that uh, that's not right for you." But you do need to be able to do something. And I think in giving her some uh, elements outside of that, some, some um, online um, um, references and some meal plans and that, it gave her uh, the starting point that she felt comfortable with. And she was able then down the line to come back because of the 
approach I'd taken and she could see my refund policy that was outlined on my website then so that, that, that's two examples that I can think of. James do you think the um, fitness industry is people see it as an easy target? Yes. Because it's like you know someone signs up for something and then they don't use the service which is entirely down to them and then they think they have the right to ask for a refund like it's, it's my fault if I don't use my Prime delivery, but I'm not going to ask Amazon for a refund. No, I know, I know. It's, it is <laughs> definitely. You know what I mean? And that comes down to fitness professionals not having a professional business as well. I think we are, we, are to, we are responsible for this as well, I think, in everything that we do. So it's what our actions and the way we govern, the way we manage ourselves, we don't set things right and the right expectations from the start. Therefore, whereas unlike Amazon, it's a professional business. You know what you're getting. They're going to, nope. Yeah. It's that you you're getting a refund on your Amazon Prime tough tough titties. Like yeah. that's like <laughs> how it goes. But, and, but again, Josh, do well, I don't think anyone would ask for it, would no. they? Because they know it'd just be futile. Yeah. It's just, exactly. But an easy target. But again, Josh, do you remember the example yeah. of the husband and wife? So the husband started training with and started getting results and in the first part. And no no no, I can't read this. His wife started training with us, lost an exceptional amount of weight, had a great time, was doing phenomenal work, right? She was with us for like two, two years, two, three years. Yeah. Like and then her husband came and started training with us. First three months, started getting results. Second three months, because he signed, he signed up to work with us for a year, he started doing his own thing. And also he neglected to tell us that he was trying to manage his diabetes and blood conditions on his own without doctor's advice. And he did his own workouts. He started doing random stuff in between. He managed to put on weight and he started to blame us for all the stuff that he did. And he wanted a refund. He said he wanted a refund for everything he'd done so far. And he didn't take responsibility for it. But thankfully, what did we have? An ironclad refund policy that states quite clearly that if you work with us for 12, if you were, because we're doing a guaranteed results in 12 months option. Mm. So we, what we did is like, you train with us for a full 12 months. You have to train with us for a full 12 months. And at the end of 12 months, having done everything we've asked for you and you've not got results, then we will happily refund your money. That's what we did here now. But we had that ironclad refund policy on the website clearly, so he had no leg to stand on. What did he do? He he shouted, he screamed from the rooftops, said he's gonna try and speak to lawyers, but he had no leg to stand on because we had that here. So in terms of websites, website is your professional domain. If you haven't got a website with a refund policy that states it clearly states your terms and conditions of doing business, you're setting yourself up for a failure long term. And yep leading into Saski, one of our superstar clients who, and this is why the whole purpose of this, this podcast is coming out right now is because she had somebody who wanted a refund 12 months after they signed up to work with her. Yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous, isn't that's it? Crazy. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Right, and, she, and obviously it was, it was super stressful. If you've never had dealt with this before, it's super stressful. It's a lot of money as well. But people with small businesses to have somebody like say, yeah, I, I want my money for all the 10 session packs I didn't do with you. 12 months, even though it's their responsibility to take to go forward with it. But the difference was, was that Saski now had a website that showed her terms and conditions and clearly states that her terms of doing business is this. Therefore, she, hasn't, she's, can, she can shout and scream from the rooftops, but she hasn't got a leg to stand on because we've done everything possible to mitigate those risks and cover her legally. Yeah, as you say, it's, it is very stressful. No one... You know, so, certainly not something you're going to be expecting 12 months later, right before Christmas, someone's asking for a, a chunk of money off you as a, as a small business. So how can people mitigate this and make sure that they have a ironclad refund policy in place? Well, first of all, you need a website and you need terms, conditions of doing business with you on your website. Secondly, they need to sign, when they sign up for you, ideally sign a waiver like your park you and also terms of terms of working with and doing business with you right at the start so they understand the terms and conditions right at the start now most people skip both of those things but you need to have at least the website and stuff on never skip a park you you should never be skipping a park you <laughs> but it particularly with the terms and conditions and that's what i was always making sure that i had both of them back even back in the day when they were they were handwritten um there would be occasions where you'd get the park you sign, but the terms and conditions, the waiver wasn't. So I'd say, look, I really need this. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So where, you know, obviously te- the legal legal stuff, most people won't understand that unless you are a lawyer as well as a fit pro. Where can people, where do people go for that stuff? Is it on the, is it on the World Wide Web? Well, you could argue to do a basic one, you could use ChatGBT to help you out. You could argue, I'm not going to say this because it comes to bite me back on the ass, but you could look at what other people have done and see how you could adapt it to your own business. However, that doesn't guarantee it's going to cover your business. We, for example, at Strength Matters, paid for legal professional advice because of all the money we lost because we didn't have it to make sure it's done and dusted and covered. But what if you what if you can't afford that? What's your option? That's what I mean. You, you can have to look at other people's and adapt it to your own. That's the thing. And potentially go to Citizens Advice. Uh, to They might have some um, contacts which make it more affordable. Um, because um, I was trying to rack my brains because of it. There's, a, there's an online legal uh, website that you can get contracts done. But as James says, they, they might be relevant to that particular area, not your particular area. So I, I would be looking more locally and um, maybe adapting something initially. But then when you've got some money set aside, as I say, perhaps citizens' advice can point you in the right direction. But getting something done you know, makes it more ironclad and protects you longer term. James, anything you want to uh, add? Any uh, final thoughts, tips? Just make sure you've got a website and make sure you've got some sort of terms and conditions on there. Like I said, we do help with terms. For anyone who gets a website with us, we do help with terms and conditions. Again, it's important to state that it's a generic one. It's not guaranteed to support you. That's, that's down to you each and everyone's individual responsibility to make sure that happens. That's yeah. really important to suggest that. But we can help you with a website because it's, it's the most important thing. We always have a terms and conditions page, privacy policy, privacy policy and cookies policy on the website no matter what because guess what it also helps boost your rankings <laughs> so having those three it really? plus about us and a contact us page instant rankings hit there you go secret bonus tip if you've listened to the end how about that there you go there you go <laughs> uh, hopefully that was helpful do get yourself a refund policy in place guys it will save you a lot of hassle in the future that is it for today please don't forget to rate review and subscribe and if you want to find out what's holding you back from growing your fitness business uh, or get a website uh, you can get a free website audit from us by going to strengthmatters.com forward slash audit <laughs>